So the formula for stress is, I say, uh, too much to do, too little time and no energy. <laughs> to be healthy emotion is that which stays only as long as you draw a line on the water. We are ignoring one important aspect when we talk about emotions, that our emotions are linked to the rhythms of our breath. Thank you for your work in helping us to see ourselves and others more beautifully and more holy and with greater levels of acceptance. From your perspective, what does emotional health look like in turbulent times? We need to bring people to be more conscious about their own emotions, their own self and what is that they can do. Here I would say we are ignoring one important aspect when we talk about emotions, that our emotions are linked to the rhythms of our breath. Neither at home nor at school we are taught how to manage our emotions. It's normal to get agitated. It's normal to get upset. But how long can you be upset? It's not in your control. But if we know something about our own breathing patterns and how it can impact our mind and we can be in charge of our emotions, it really brings so much empowerment in ourselves and makes us so centered. Second, or we idealize, oh, I should never get angry. I usually see mums feeling so upset when they get upset with the kids at home and they get upset because they got upset. You see, and then the cycle goes on. There is a sense of acceptance about all these emotions. No emotion is good or bad. They are there. They make you human being. It's emotions that makes us alive, that makes us different from other objects. Now, how to channel the negative emotion, how to transform that into positive emotion? This is a challenge. And here I would say our breath work and our broadened awareness and a look at our own life and how we have handled such emotions before can help us to uh, be more centered. Now, I would like to uh, say something here about different emotions connected with different chakras in our own body. Mm -hmm. You know, each emotion has a particular sensation in a particular part of the body. And this, in the yogic science, we call the chakras, the seven chakras in the body. Actually, there are 109 chakras. Chakras are uh, energy points of the 109, these uh, seven or more important. For example, the navel uh, chakra, the solar plexus, is for jealousy, generosity, joy, and then greed. All these four, you know, four emotions, you find the sensation there. No fear, anger, and hatred, they're all in one area, that is the heart chakra. Someone who has hatred, they have no love and no fear. If you are afraid, then uh, there is no hate nor love. Be because it's the same emotion which expresses in one pattern or other. They are linked. It's the same energy, life force, which e it gets expressed as hatred. You find all these Nexalites and the militants. Uh, you know, they have so much hatred. But why that hatred? Because they have love also. Then same amount of love also they have and fear these three things and then you go to the uh, throat chakra this is where you find grief and gratefulness when you feel grateful your throat chokes and when you are so sad there is some sensation that arises in the throat similarly in between the eyebrows the third eye point this is anger and alertness you will see if you are alert at that moment, anger is not expressed. But if you are angry, at that moment, there is no alertness. These two opposite expression of the same energy is in our body. And this goes up and down. So you can't label this is bad, this is good. It's one energy, one electricity, one life force. Now, anger and alertness. 
if you often you find people who are very alert, they are prone to get angry more. That particular spot in their, uh, you know, body is more activated. Similarly, when the energy reaches to the top of the head, there is colorfulness, a blissfulness. Uh, uh, there is a sense of total peace and tranquility, a sense of oneness with everybody. So you feel that everyone belongs to you. In India, grandmothers used to say, if child is getting upset or so, what did you feed him today? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, your food impacts your mind. Uh, if someone is doing brilliant work, what did they feed you today? <laughs> so, Vata Pitta Kapha Ayurveda describes a lot about behavior, tendencies of people connected to uh, the doshas, the balances in the body, you know, how the doshas function through them. So, if someone is high in Pitta, you give them Mexican food or some chili and then that's it. You can expect some firecrackers coming. <laughs> <laughs> Healthy emotion is that which stays only as long as you draw a line on the water. <laughs> Have you noticed the kids are angry and are they crying and the tears are still on their cheek and the skin starts smiling in no time, you know. They'll smile immediately. For an adult, for them to smile back when they are upset, I don't know how long it takes. <laughs> Maybe months. So. This emotional resilience is inbuilt in us. I find uh, two uh, main things in the whole world when I see in some part of the world we express our emotion a lot. We keep telling, oh, I love you, I love you, oh, honey, and all that <laughs> stuff a lot. But then somewhere then you turn to be diabetic and you can't use the honey also. <laughs> On the other side of the planet, uh, in some countries, you bury your emotions so much that you never say the word I love you to anybody. You know, your emotions are not expressed. You will find it in many Asian countries, the women, they don't express their emotions. And so that becomes a huge pressure and we build up the pressure in the mind and then it gives rise to many psychological and physiological uh, problems. The middle path is what is essential here and that is possible if we become aware of the uh, life from a broader context. What do you say, Susan? Yes. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, absolutely when we suppress emotions, there's an amplification effect. You know, when you try not to think about something, you think about that thing. It's fascinating to me that we live very much in a society that seems to encourage emotional suppression and what I hear you saying so beautifully is there's a cultural narrative around emotions that actually leads us to lose our way from ourselves leads us to become decentered and uncentered I wonder you know what is that that thing it sounds like you're speaking to an essence of self that is wise and I'm wondering if you can talk talk about that. See there is something which is beyond emotion in all of us, our spirit. Emotions are changing, no emotion can be the same all through, you know. Their intensity changes, their, their expression changes. When a couple fall in love with each other they they express their love a lot and then as time goes and their expression is little, takes a little back seat I suppose and then, <laughs> then the whole thing starts, you know, you don't love me and do you really love me, all these questions. <laughs> but you didn't buy me flowers. <laughs> <laughs> all that stuff. Where's my coffee in bed? <laughs> <laughs> but there is something that's, uh, that doesn't change in us. But we don't pay attention to that aspect of our life. Yeah. Our thoughts, our body changes, our thoughts change, our emotions change. But to realize the change, there need to be some reference point which is not changing. Because of its presence, that something is present in us that is not changing, we are able to notice the changes as well. 
being in touch with that aspect of us that doesn't change the self is what is meditation and meditation doesn't make you dull and dry it helps you to enjoy the emotions better instead of getting embroiled in it it helps you to witness and watch the emotions and uh, be with as i'm talking in your mind there is a dialogue going on are you aware of that dialogue you say yes yes or no no there is agreement or disagreement we are going through that right are we aware of this similarly you see someone who is and they are pushing your buttons and you get so upset annoyed and something is happening a sensation is arising inside of you are you aware of those sensations if we are aware then we filter whether to act on it or not act on it but those who do not have this filter they end up in the jail they too got all these emotions and they just acted with from those emotions and you know they feel so helpless if you interact with the, the so called criminals you find in all those culprits there is a victim crying for help because they just out of an emotional outburst they did something which they were not wanting to do in fact so how can we channelize our emotion this energy this is possible only when we are able to take a little step back from the emotions and then give a proper channel to those emotions instead of shutting them down or shutting it off or getting dragged by it you are able to handle it for your advantage yeah i think that's such a powerful perspective the that that psychological capacity to helicopter above your emotion um one of the things that i often think of in my work is how when we are sad we'll often say something like i am sad you know i am angry Th- that language that we use is so powerful because when we say something like i am it's almost like we are defining ourselves by the emotion 100% of me is sad and there's no space for anything else